friends, welcome to episode 186 of Storyteller Conclaves, the show all about helping you run the best tabletop role-playing game that you can, whether you're a new storyteller or dungeon master learning the craft, or an experienced storyteller looking to take your game to the next level. I'm Sarah. I'm Rob. How we doing, Rob? Oh, I'm getting back to the desk here, because yes, I you had are. to pause that. Well, that's what, you, what happens when you double as both my co-host and my technician. So. And one day, one day, I'm going to get a nice little pad right here, and it's going to have all the controls that I need. Oh, I can man. just tap at it. Wouldn't Everything be nice? will be great. That'd be a fantastic Christmas gift. Wouldn't that be no- Yeah. That would- <laughs> How about that? <laughs> actually... I need to figure out if it's going to be fantastic, if it's going to actually work at all for yeah, what I right, do. Yeah, right, right. That's, yeah, that's I my never running just, problem. I never just buy, like, technology no. blind for people. Because... <laughs> well, and especially something like that, like, I want to know it's going to work, but, like, I've kind of poked at it a little bit and looked at the different versions mm-hmm. of the of the pad, and the new one that's got, like, the dials and adjustments, I'm like, oh, oh that sounds so good. Yeah. Like, it, it, it targets, but, like, at the same time, those dials do a specific thing, and you have to dial them into specific programs, and I'm like... Is that really going to achieve everything I need? Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, so I don't know. No. We'll find out. Uh, so n- this coming weekend, in like two days yes. or so, we have the double gaming extravaganza. Yes. Uh, your game is up first on Saturday. How are you feeling? Honestly, I am very lazy about it. Um, yep. I've still got some, like, I have the maps that I need for the most part. Um, I just have to put them into the digital program so I have the layouts ready to go. Sure, sure. Um, but I'm really kind of taking it lightly because i expect it to be heavily narrative yeah I um think so. but i also don't know what you guys are going to do i don't know which direction you're going to take first um you you have a couple paths that you could do and I'm, I'm basically opening it up and so in that sense i know the motivations mm-hmm. i know the direction um and i'm confident i have a pretty good idea of which way you're gonna go yeah um but at the same time like i'm comfortable with whichever way it heads and I, I think, too, like, even, even if it is only, you know, there, there is a couple paths we could go, but mm-hmm. it's only a couple, and they're yes. pretty predictable. Yes. And I think they're ones that you've been planning for for a while. So yeah, it's... so it's 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 there, and the it, it's really going to be heavily narrative. Yeah. So yeah. I don't need as much prep in that regards to that. Very cool, very so cool. So I have, like, one thing I'm going to print up and uh, so that it's ready to go for, as a handout, mm-hmm. um, but I don't need NPC cards. I have the ones that I need. Yep. Um, I have spares in case I just need random people. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I feel pretty confident. Good, good, so. good, good. Then we got Mouse Guard uh, the day after. Yes. Uh, run by a uh, friend of the show, the Mad Elf. Mm-hmm. Hoping that uh, he feels better and that uh, there's enough energy there to run. But if not, we will take it easy, and that's uh, perfectly hoping, fine. Hoping his wife feels better, too. Yes. Uh, there, you know, there was, uh, we, our last Mouse Guard game was canceled because mm-hmm. there was uh, a health concern. Yep. Uh, I understand uh, uh, people are doing better, but, you know, here's hoping that that, that has continued and such like exactly. that. Exactly. So. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be kind of a full weekend at the same time. And, you know, we have the holiday. Uh, so, we, you know, family and friends and people are getting together mm-hmm. tomorrow, which is great. Like, my family is getting together for it, like we always do. But there's, you know, the typical stresses that kind of go along with that. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm hearing a lot about friends getting together, which always makes mm-hmm. me happy that, like, for those who don't have family close, family near, or family dear, they're still family. And I love that. I yeah. love hearing about that. And uh, Sean and I are actually, uh, Sean and I are doing the introvert's dream. Oh. We're not doing anything. PJ's on the couch. PJ's on the couch. You're gonna, a... Wait, are you going to do the standard thing? Are you ordering a pizza? No, no, oh, no, 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 okay. no, 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 because I don't want anybody to work on Thanksgiving. Oh, like, that's I don't a want very anybody to work. To, so yeah. we, we've got some, we've got some fresh salmon. Yeah, uh, that we're going to do up with nice. some, uh, some lemon and some rice, and okay, it's going to be really nice. All right, well, yeah. that sounds lovely. Like uh, I know I'm going to be running a little bit like a chicken with my head cut off uh, tomorrow, so I kind of envy that to a degree. But at the same time, I love my family; they're great people. Yeah, so. yeah. And, They're... you know, if you crash early, you know, we'll be available for video games or whatever. Exactly. Well, I, I saw that we have some friends who are who have some time there available, so I was like, there's a little bit of an itch there. But at the same time, I think we're doing just fine. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so tonight's show. Tonight's show, yeah. <laughs> I had this on deck in my head for the better part of three or four months. Yeah, yeah, I think we, I think we both did. And we, uh, we, we we put this topic down and it was like, oh, yeah, we, we need to talk about this. Yeah, because uh, it, it made its rounds through Twitter and a few other places and it's still kind of present. Um, so I think enough discussion has been out there yeah. to to be able to look up and reference and, and stuff like that. And we'll definitely be doing that. But um, 
I'm going to say this because I think it's a good idea that we put this at the beginning like you had talked about. Well, well hang, hang on. Say, we haven't said what the topic right. is yet. Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> For... So tonight's discussion uh, is stereotypes in gaming. And in doing so, we are going to be talking about a lot of topic here. And the kind of disclaimer that we're saying here is that we're we're not trying to make a statement about people who play games, who play certain games people who play certain races, people who run certain games, stories that they tell. That yeah. we're, we're not saying that inevitably makes you a racist or a bigot or you're a terrible person. We're not saying that at all. That is not exactly. the statement we're making. There is a knee-jerk reaction in a lot of discussions of race and implications of mm-hmm. racism and stuff like that where people go, oh, so you're calling me a racist. And, and the answer it, is no. It, it's, it, the answer is no. If at any point during this show you feel like we are calling you a racist because you partake in a certain game or doing it, you have mistaken it because no. that is never our intention. It is yeah. That is not where we're going with any of this. So please sit back and relax. I'm not saying this isn't going to be an in-depth discussion, but... Uh, yeah, we're going to be gracing a lot of topics. We're going to try and take a couple different points of view as we're moving through it, but we're also just going to be exposing a lot of things that are truths that are out there. Um, There are things that some things you may have thought about and are are very quick to your mind. Others where you're going to be like, Oh God, I guess that is true. And I had that feeling when I started this, I, I came at it from a perspective of, you know, that, does seem to ring true on a few Mm -hmm. things and literally stepping into the topic i went oh dear god i knew these things why didn't they sit in the front of my brain while i was reading this originally yep um so yeah so let's start like we always do with the kind of definition of where we're coming from uh so all right what are we talking about when we mean stereotypes in gaming um well there's a lot of them here uh a lot of this is is having to do with um, the basis for where we get a lot of our, say, like, fantasy tropes and stuff like that, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. A lot of this discussion is going to take place about, like, orcs are evil, brutish barbarians, yes. and drow are backstabbing, awful, you know, spider-worshipping mm-hmm. jerks, mm-hmm. etc. Um, but... The larger implications of a lot of these things is uh, kind of where the stereotype behind them lies. Mm -hmm. And that being looking at any group of people, um, any group of humanoids um, that have sentience Mm -hmm. in your your gaming, uh, uh, in your story, Mm -hmm. and saying that these people as a race have a specific and oftentimes negative attribute. Yeah. And that attribute typically means that they are okay to kill without remorse. Yes. Yes. Um, the, de- the, 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 the tightest definition <coughs> that we could say is stereotyping helps you define them. Uh, you, had, you had pulled a lot of excellent quotes. And I, I did. I kind of want to reference some of those because they, they form a very strong basis for the, uh, um, the foundation of this discussion to kind of give us you know where where we're coming from uh and i think the first one you pulled here was from uh eugene and gwendolyn marshall yeah they're they are of um arcane arcanist press um and uh one is a university philosophy uh, professor and game designer uh this particular article was pulled off of Mm -hmm. medium.com and it's called orcs and racism in D D." yes um do you want to read it do you want me to read it uh it's up to you Okay. Um, and you're talking about that first quote that, she, that I, I pulled, right? Yes, yes. Um, so, in other words, the concept of race as it was used from at least the Enlightenment forward to the 20th century is frankly bankrupt. This is not to say that there is no such thing as ancestry or heritage and genetic differences, of course. But, and this is the key, those differences simply do not map cleanly onto anything in our bi- biology as simplistic as the concept of race, as it is often used. Yep. Um, what's more, that concept of the world is is uh, has been used to justify historic atrocities. Indeed, racists still use these bogus, faux scientific justifications to support their prejudice. Because these harmful concepts have no place in our world, and they need to be, they need not be in stories we tell our friends either. Yep. And I think that's, 
that's the the true statement there is that what we look at often as a fantasy framework what we call races what mm-hmm. we call that defines the them that is not us yeah yeah and that then gets justified by mechanics or attributes or however you want to frame it to make it okay yeah uh, you pulled another quote here from a, uh, uh, a source uh, named uh, N.K. Jamison. Mm-hmm. Jameson. Jamison? Jamison. Jamison, I think, is the way it's pronounced. Um, and uh, uh, N.K. Jamison says, uh, orcs, and, and oh, I, oh, I agree with this so much, orcs are human beings who can be slaughtered without conscience or apology. Creatures that look like people, but aren't really. Kind of, sort of people who aren't worthy of even the most basic moral considerations, like the right to exist. Only way to deal with them is to control them utterly a la slavery or wipe them out. Huh. Sounds familiar. The whole concept of orcs is irredeemable. Orcs are a fruit of the poison vine that is human fear of, quote, the other. In games like Dungeons and Dragons, orcs are, quote, fun way to bring faceless savage dark hordes into fantasy setting and then gleefully go on gen- go genocidal on them. They're an amalgamation of stereotypes, and to me, that's no fun at all. Um... Yeah. Yeah. I I mean I don't know that I would have phrased it as strongly personally. No, uh, but I it it makes a bold framework for the initial statement. It yeah, it definitely it definitely makes a bold statement about about very much the point that we're kind of getting at um here in our in our initial like laying the groundwork for for what we're talking about here. Yeah. Um and I'm sure like we can all think of you know, some sort of race, oftentimes a humanoid race or something like that, a species of sorts that we have put into our stories, into our games. Maybe we've done the subversive thing and said like, oh, the orcs are the smart ones actually in our setting. Yeah. It's the elves who are barbaric. Yeah. Okay. So now we're just slaughtering elves instead of orcs. Yeah. You know. Um, Which brings me to the other quote that I wanted to put in here too, which I think is is the other, the kind of final cap on this, and that is that by James Menendez Hodes, uh, which is, Racist myths from British Academy and and Army fuel J.R. Tolkien's creation of the orcs as an analog for Asian people. D&D, like Tolkien, makes race literally an in-game by applying immutable modifiers to character ability score skills and other characteristics. The in-game fiction justifies these character traits as absolute realities. Yep. And I think that's the key point there is that we they are becoming... It, it is a mechanic. Yeah. And by doing so, you're thinking it's okay. Because now it's part of the system. And right. That, that makes it acceptable. You know? Um, it is... It is... A fact mm-hmm. of of the way things are. Oh, it's it's just a template. It's just right. uh it's just a plus two to this and a minus two to that. Like it's not a huge deal. It's just a racial modifier or whatever. But like right. what does that say about all members of that particular race or species or whatever having those particular attributes, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. Um, and it doesn't account for a lot of nuance at all when you apply this palm mal to everybody who has that particular you know, name uh, for their for their race or species or whatever. Right, right. Well, we don't even talk about species. We talk about race. We don't. Yeah, and that's, Which... and, that's and that's kind of you know something that's kind of coming up later on. So, so let's step in now that we've kind of laid the very heavy handed <laughs> brutish lines. Now, now that we're like we're all racists, <laughs> uh, we're all a little racist. Wh- but there's why, a reason for that. Why? Why are we like this? Why do we do this? What function has this served in gaming? That we have fallen on this pattern, it's um, tradition so readily. Yeah, I mean it's it's what we know by tradition. D and D being the boldest term out there, and 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 a line that a lot of things are drawn from. Mm-hmm. You know, was the inspiration, and Tolkien was the inspiration in many ways for those styles of games. Yeah, absolutely. So. You you can't really start with gaming so much as you have to keep rolling back the layers to say what really did this, what what brought this to a point, right? What media inspired the games that we play in the first place that have this content? Uh, 
you know, and and then you fall into that sort of pattern of it's always been this way. Yeah. You know, because it was okay back in the 70s when Gygax did it. And then it was okay in the 80s because it was okay in the 70s. And then it was okay in the 90s because it was always okay in the 70s and 80s. Right. I mean, <coughs> in in all framework, you can go a lot farther back than that. It was okay for Gygax to do it because... It was okay for Tolkien to do it. It was okay to Tolkien. And it was okay for Tolkien to do it because literally that was what was fed to the entirety of the Allies. Sure. Them are dangerous. A World look at War this, I veteran. Look yeah. at these Mongolites. Yeah. Well... That's not what the Germans were. They weren't Mongolites. So where did that term come from? Oh, that term came from the Mongol hordes mm -hmm. that we fought previously, which came from the next thing that we fought previously. And the art that generated from those, you can draw back to literally fighting, you know, the British fighting the Chinese. Yeah, yeah. You know, the unclean Chinese, the Chinaman who would come and take your women, mm -hmm. who in the art that they put out, looked like goblins. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's the thing, is is that all of this comes from a deep-rooted belief set that was set a lot longer ago than any of us. And that's not our fault. This is something that not just the Allies and Axis did. This is what has been happening from the beginning of history. Well, sure. I mean, look, look, it's 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 difficult to motivate your soldiers to fight a war if they view the other people on the other side as actual people. Correct. They don't want to kill them then. So what you do, you 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 other them. Yeah. You teach your soldiers to view them as something inhuman and stuff like that. And that and that sits with them. You know, you don't just unlearn that stuff when you leave the battlefield the same way that Tolkien didn't unlearn you know, the racism that, that, that he had brought with him, that he had learned on the battlefield in World War One. Why would he? Why would he? Um and, you know, again, we're not we're not calling Tolkien a racist or anything like that, but you can do a racism without Right. Without being a racist, yeah. you know. And and, and we're I don't we, want to We keep... all have biases. Yeah. We're all gonna have biases that come from a specific point. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of recognizing them and knowing when and how they are framed within stories. Yes. So when you look at something that that we justify, you know, is a story reason and therefore not racism. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, or, or, or a racism. I will say is or a racism. A racism, yes. You know, that's okay. But the answer is it's not necessarily okay when it comes to gaming. Yeah. Because of the fact that Gaming is not a novel. It is not your point of view. And and I'll address more of that later, but that's mm -hmm. why I'm I'm gonna put that out there as a that's my sticker on it. <laughs> I'll come back to it. Yeah. Uh I, I mean I think there you know we we know where we know where it comes from, but then we, we kept hanging on to it because it became tradition. Yeah. Um and I remember when a lot of these discussions started happening, uh you got a lot of people who were saying like well, I don't understand. It's been okay, you know, for for all these years. It's only now it's a problem, you know. It's well, make believe. It's not reality. Right, right, and, and and that it's make believe. It's not a reality. Or or you get a lot of people. Um, you know, the, the, a big counter argument I started hearing was, well, there's a there's a story reason for it. You know, orcs are all evil because they worship an evil god, and he taints the entire you know the entire race of them, et cetera, et cetera. Like, that's fine. You can come up with story justifications for it, and it can be awful at the same time i mean like this is literally what tolkien said uh the orcs are definitely stated to be corruptions of the human form seen in elves and men they are were squat broad uh flat-nosed shallow-skinned with wide mouths and slant eyes in fact degraded and repulsive versions of the two europeans least lovely mongol types quote unquote he said it yeah like he was defining it but again he was defining it based upon the world that he lived in that defined them the them as mongols yeah yeah that that was a term that was in his world and in his view not necessarily recognizing what it meant right right you know um i think what are the other what are the other big the other big uh uh things here though i mean aside from there just being essentially a history that leads to a tradition of mm -hmm. um you know racial depictions of 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 
uh, you know, othered races and stuff like that in our fantasy, though, is in our in our stories we want to we want our stories to be heroic, right? Yeah, you know, we want to be the big damn heroes conquering the mustache twirling villain, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the day and stuff like that. And we need to know that the the, the villain that we defeated is evil, and that we are the unambiguously good guys. And the such like the that. cowboys versus the Indians, the Axis versus the you know Allies versus the Nazis. Yeah, the Space Marines versus the Bugs. It's it's a clean de- definition. Exactly. We always want our our stories to be black and white like this. And the good guys with the white hats need bad guys with black hats to shoot in, mm-hmm. uh, to shoot at. And you know that's where you get these sort of dichotomies. Um, mm-hmm. The problem is is that uh, oftentimes these unambiguous evils don't exist in reality no you know and especially not down racial divides no um i was saying to you earlier i think like the uh uh the last time we had a uh unambiguous evil in our world was world war Two when we had nazis mm-hmm. well <laughs> nazis nowadays but neither here nor there um, but yeah, Nazis will always be evil. And I think again, like, you know, we saw like in the, uh, I want to say like early two thousands, you know, there was a big boom of video games, uh, Wolfenstein and, uh, the original call of duty before it became modern warfare and black ops and all that jazz. The very first call of duty game was a world war two game. And, you know, again, against the Nazis and whatnot. Um, and uh, I think you saw that because, like, in the wake of 9-11, we as Americans were looking for an unambiguous evil to go and fight. And I think that's where we saw a lot of these Nazis come in because we needed we needed someone we could just shoot and not feel bad about, you know? Yeah, yeah, we needed we needed something that we could instantaneously frame without question and say, this is what's going on. And, in, you know, in, in like, D&D and stuff like that, that's where orcs sit. That's where drows sit, you mm-hmm. know. But the problem is, is that, again, those are down racial lines, not ideological lines, you know. Right, right. We're not, we're not killing orcs because they're fascists. We're killing them because they have green skin, you know. Yes, yes, <laughs> and, exactly. And there's, it's, there's something really messed up about that. Well, it and it's it's a framework that we we have to have. It's, it's, it's pres- ever-present. And has always been present. It's the, I'm a a blue dot fighting the red dot. Uh-huh. Like, I have to get rid of all the red dots. We're not giving them more definition than that. Yeah. We're, we're, we're literally stepping away from that and saying, this is all that it is. Mm-hmm. Um, to make it easier. To make it better <coughs> defined. Um, and to make it acceptable, like we said. Yeah. Early on. So, is it bad that this is what we are and the answer is not easy um, no it's, it's it, it never is and and it's it's got so much nuance and complexity to it and every story is unique you know yeah this isn't a one-size-fits-all answer but I mean, it's good to have a discussion about, D&D you know? has a monster manual to yeah. define the them these are the monsters they are not allowed to be a race and yet some of them have become that yeah like it is. They are now traits or, or or races that you could be, and we've seen that for a long time. People saying, "Well, I want to play a minotaur, or I want to play this," and those became either homebrewed races that were no longer something that was just classified as a monster or them, mm-hmm. because somebody wanted to change that. You know, we also have like we we have Vampire the Masquerade. Vampires were never a uh, an acceptable thing. Mm-hmm. They were the villain. Yeah. And then they became not the villain. In fact, could be heroes in some flavor. Now they just smoke cloves and stand outside the comic shop in a black trench coat, <laughs> scaring the locals. And they glow. And they, 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 glow. they glow. We don't know why they glow, but they glow. <laughs> and so all of that puts a different spin on this concept. And... Uh, thank you for the check-in, Overwatch. I appreciate it. Um, so the so when you you start thinking about that, you start questioning what you have, quote unquote, permission to kill. Yeah, in a game that is literally defined as 
kill or be killed. Right. You know, that that's its main mechanic. And games that have stepped away from that and don't use that at all, it becomes more of a blurred point of how close to fantasy and reality are we. Mm-hmm. Is Is it much to say that by not defining and making things more gray and closer to reality that we're losing fantasy. We're losing the high fantasy. It's yeah. I mean, is it like intrinsic to like the dungeons and dragons experience to be able to kill things with impunity? You know? Yeah. I mean, it is, it's a game where 90% of its, of its mechanics have to do with combat. It's a game where one third of the core books is called a monster manual. Mm hmm. Um, uh, if you, if you were not playing with milestone experience, um, most of your experience points and advancement, therefore, will come from killing enemies. But the amount of uh, experience you get depends on how big and scary those monsters are. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do you do? What are you supposed to do with that gaming experience if you take away the ability to essentially kill with impunity, you know? Well, you have to define what... You have to define what is the racism that is being done. Mm -hmm. And just answering that question alone is hard and uncomfortable. Yeah, it is. It it, it It is is. straight up uncomfortable. And it was notable when Wizards of the Coast did did it. Like, everybody was uncomfortable. It caused a tear. It's still causing a tear, yeah. Without a doubt, without a doubt. I think, like, even our discussion causes another level of the tear. But I think the tear needs to be there to uncover. You have to rip the packaging off to look what's inside. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And it, like, it, like, it's it's good to have these discussions because, like, even if you – even if if everything we're saying now, even if, if, if you're on entirely the different side of this of this discussion and you think that, um, you know, all of this is, is a, bunch of, a bunch of hogwash that just is blown out of proportion and whatnot, at least you've taken part in the discussion and you've thought about it to arrive at your – you know, decision at, at your decision, and that yep. and that's I think all we're trying to do here is is spark some thought, spark some discussion, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I don't know that we have the answers. You and I are a couple. I of, do not have the answers. <laughs> you you and I are a couple of white folks from you know suburbia. Yeah. So like, we really don't have the 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 the, the chops here to solve racial tensions in the gaming sphere. No, but at the same time, I I think much like much of our discussions and even our one hundred ones, we're we're here to open a doorway and expose things that you don't necessarily run across sitting at your table alone with your friends. Yeah, and just something to think about when you're writing your next game, you know? Yeah. Just how are you going to portray the the bad guys in there? And, you know, are you are you going to do it with, oh, they're an evil race of, well, may, and I maybe think, think about that let's, one just a little. Let's you know? reframe that right now. I think that's one of the things that's easy is how do you undo your mind frame or how do you reevaluate what you're looking at within your story? I think one of the key points that you we we had a long time ago was I had asked you about um, having um, I want to say slavery in one of my games, mm-hmm. and you said, "Is it necessary to tell the story? Yeah. Like, is it a key component of the story?" And I was like, "No, it really isn't." Then get rid of it. Just throw it out yeah. if it's not important. If it's not, you know, is if it's not a racial, th- it, and I say racial, if it's not an injustice that is a core mechanic of the story, it is not important. You're yeah. doing it for some other reason. So the whole idea of of having race be an important matter where this race doesn't like this race, mm-hmm. if it's an us to them, that's not as important as you think. That is That is a contradiction that we created and a fabrication that exists in our particular society which is one race that doesn't like aspects of other cultures. Yeah, this isn't... So as, that's... as we kind of said at the beginning of the show, like the term race does not hold up Correct. as any sort of a significant signifier to differentiate two humans from one another. Correct. We have cultures, we have heritages, right. we have all sorts of different things, and there are different amounts of, uh, of, of, of skin pigmentation in different people from different regions of the world for yeah. various reasons. But when it comes down to it, you know, that that old adage, oh, we all bleed red. Well, we do. Um, but, like, to say that a if in your game you're like, well, 
elves hate orcs. That's like saying frogs hate wolves. They are not the same race. Mm-hmm. In fact, there are probably four dozen different cultures of frog and t- ten different varieties of wolf. They all jointly hate e- the other side. Yeah. Equally. Yeah. You know, with impunity. Yeah. What, what, did they commit mass wolf genocide? Like, what, what, what are you talking about? What happened? And that's, that's the thing about what happens and is written into these books that orcs are terrible and everyone fears them. What did they do to all these races? Yeah. Well, no, they're just aggressive. All of them? All of them mm-hmm. are just aggressive jerks. Yes. Why? Because they're evil. Evil's a magical thing? Right, right. You know? And, and like, the only time that this holds water truthfully is in cultural separation. And I'll, I'll use a Firefly reference that, mm-hmm. that works for me. There is an other in Firefly. And it's not the obvious one. It's the Reapers. They are a diseased, horrific people. Mm-hmm. They are not a culture. They are literally zombies. They are a different way of handling it. Yeah, space zombies, basically. Space yeah. zombies that have kind of a culture that's mm-hmm. horrific. Mm-hmm. But that is the only time that it's literally a a bastardization of a race that create that is equally dis you know distanced from everyone else. Well, like you said though, they're they're more treated like zombies than anything else. Like it's it's not even like oh these are people out there who made a conscious decision to develop their culture in certain ways. Right. This is like these people are like sick and insane. Yeah. And like they're afflicted. Correct. Much in the way that zombies would be. Yes. You know. Exactly. They're not called zombies, but they're treated narratively the exact same way. They're infected. Correct. And so in that sense, it is framed differently. It's not racism because it's literally a a, a destructive uh, framework of a specific race in a specific situation. And that's that's the difference. It isn't a whole species being disliked by other species mm-hmm. because the species is a certain way. That's the challenge. So when we... When we unambiguously frame an entire species, which we call race in these games, we are defining it that way. And mm-hmm. that is terrifying. Yeah. Like, the Vogons is probably the closest species, you know, racism that I can think of in any modern writing. That is that is framed in such because their culture is a specific way. Hmm. They have a cultural trope of being monotonous because that is how their world is run uh for those of you who don't know he's referring to the vogons from uh douglas adams uh epic trilogy hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy correct and all, like all five books of it and like they kind of treat like the universe kind of treats humanity as idiots which is fine mm-hmm. you know but we kind of are we kind of are we're all stuck on a planet and they they poke fun at us like we don't know what's going on in the universe because we don't we don't even have hyperspace travel correct and um We're and pretty and yet like you have a, a racism created or, or speciesism created with the vogons just as equally mm-hmm. that they yeah they run everything <sighs> but they're good at running everything but they're not they're just good at bureaucracy that no one else wants to do well i think they're they're more they're more a uh uh <laughs> they're more an analog to the british government w- without and bureaucracy it, but, but and there is the framework connection point Mm-hmm. And that was the point they were trying to make. That is the point that Douglas Adams was trying to make. He was making a direct story, racism, culturalism, where he was pointing out an aspect of something and then literally cartooning it up into a, an entire species. Yeah, sure. Galactic sure. species. And that, when you translate that to role play, it doesn't hold water. Because you can't be a Vogon and be different. I mean, sure. And I think that becomes the challenge. You are you are you are monsterizing folk, if you will, and saying this is an other. These others are not civilized. 
you're putting them in the monster menu, you're taking them away as an option, yeah, removing yeah. the agency, and framing the story in a specific way. Right? For yeah. everyone to understand. I think in... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do this. In modern storytelling, we don't need that. We are intelligent people at a table who want to make our worlds. And to say, I cannot have the opportunity as a story crafter to make a world the way I need it to be because someone else has told me these are the rules for these others. They are not acceptable. I am choosing that as the story writer frames the world regardless of what you think. You have everything else becomes a homebrew. Yeah, sure. It's lazy. It's lazy to re- it's it's always been lazy to rely on stereotypes. Mm-hmm. Like, it's easy. It's it's lazy because it's because it's shorthand. It stops you from ever having to understand. And I mean this. I mean this in real life as well as gaming. Mm-hmm. You know, as well as story writing. Um. So it's been lazy to rely on stereotypes because it's just it's just shorthand for a whole dealing with whole swaths of people. You don't need to identify them as individuals. You don't need to humanize them in any way. You just just you just put a big rubber stamp on the whole race, and that's and that's it. You know. Yeah. And lazy, racism is just so it's just so lazy across the board. Yeah. Um, I'm a little more interested in like applications what can we do actively about this sort of stuff um you mentioned earlier wizards of the coast Mm -hmm. kind of going through and doing things and they've been doing this for a while and i think that's kind of what started a lot of this discussion i saw a couple articles online that sprouted up around this time um and then it was i want to say a handful of years ago i want to say like 2019 or so is when you started seeing those articles where wizards of the coast was like actually changing lore in their source material yeah, and re- whatnot. To removing kind of... the the cultural aspects of a character race, like elf yeah. or orc or whatever, and letting the player do that through background. Uh, and then I think it was Tasha's Cauldron of Everything uh, that we saw them go into, like, it was either that or Xanathar's, and I don't remember which, and I apologize for that. Mm-hmm. Um where we saw them actually making the switch over to, I believe they called them heritages. Yes. Uh, where you could kind of craft your own back rather than like you know I'm a I'm a half elf, therefore I get plus two to charisma, plus one to dexterity, I think it is, mm-hmm. and you know this attribute and that attribute and these weapon proficiencies and whatnot, because all half elves are like that. Mm-hmm. You know, <clears throat> they kind of acknowledge that. Yeah, you're making an individual, mm-hmm. and whereas there might be certain, you know, cultural influences that might push from one direction or another, being, you know, half elven, half human, uh, a lot of like your racial, like you're not always going to be quote unquote natural diplomats, like they say in the player's handbook, yeah. which is what, yeah. what it gives you your plus two to charisma. You know, everybody's going to have an individual experience there, and so. Yeah. They started making this heritage sort of thing where you could kind of handcraft your own backgrounds and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And for what it's worth, I think that's great. Yeah. It's taking the 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 biology <coughs> out of it hmm. so that the that the racial traits aren't I don't know, sociological or societal. Right. Like they biological are... ones like dark vision and stuff like that, like those can stay. Like that's just yeah. that's just biology. Like... Right. You're not you're not justifying that a a, a a troll or a half giant is can't be educated. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're no longer stating that that they're you know, instead of having the book say they're dim witted. They're brutish and dumb. So they're they're at a negative one to intelligent and right. wisdom. Uh, you know, but they're exceptionally strong and large, so they're a plus two to strength. Okay, the plus two to strength makes sense because that's a biology, right? Yeah. You're you're not gonna say like, w- how are you to say that their culture couldn't be intelligent? Yeah, it's somewhere. Yeah. Maybe some of them are are dim witted because they live under bridges alone and don't have another person in their culture to help them, you know, or to develop anything. But like, there might be a city of them. Why not? You know, sure, sure. Um, I I think. Wizards has come under a little bit of fire lately, at least from judging from like Reddit threads I've seen and such like that. Um, 
I don't really partake in the drama because I don't care. I think Wizards is free to do whatever they want with their IP. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, they might not be doing it as well as they think they are, but uh, you know, at least they're trying. Um, I think I think they're having to try and dial back the excessive history that they have and yeah. change an entire design of a system. Yeah. And you, I, you can't do that in a in a step. It's it's not it's not an easy thing and it's not going to be done cleanly and it's not going to be done without a little bit of outcry. So um again, I don't really have an opinion on how well of a job they're doing. I haven't looked, frankly. Mm-hmm. Um but I know it's rustling some jimmies out there. Um well, I mean, the the stuff that I have looked into is that there are races that have been added that are less, I, I guess, troped against something, and mm-hmm. the ones that have been cleaned up are equally as 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 established. Yeah, yeah. That they're that they've they've made adjustments to. But people have said, like, well, then why did they add this one? Because it clearly exposes a racism. That that it's a cultural throwback against why yeah and the answer is yeah there's still going to be reference points Mm -hmm. so uh one of the big things too is that i i I, you you touched on this earlier is like don't say race when you mean species yeah and we've kind of been using both words throughout this discussion Mm -hmm. but like this is the real big crux of it like for Mm -hmm. me especially like this is this Mm -hmm. is this was the one that like when when this whole um, you know, our orcs racist discussion came up as like, why are we discussing racism with orcs? They're not the same species. No. We should be having a discussion about species, not race. Yeah. You know, race, as we use it in the real world, distinguishes between diff- different ethnicities and heritages of subgroups of the same species, human. Yeah. Race, as we use it in gaming, typically refers to what species your character is. Right. Um, And I say typically because, like, I run an Elder Scrolls game, and all the mer are the same species. Mm -hmm. All the men are the same species. It's just, you know, but they are different racial groups. Yes. You know. Um, But typically, though, when we're talking about, like, well, is it racist to say that orcs are stronger than humans? No, because we're not really talking about race. Mm -mm. We are talking about species. And if your species is, like, a half giant, it's not racist to say that, like, yeah, they've got a plus two to strength. It's not racist for me to say spiders are better than crawling walls than humans are Mm -hmm. spiders are typically very good at that humans traditionally very rubbish unless you're at planet rock right um but uh you know it's it's not racist to point that out because it's just a they're a different species they have eight legs and little sticky pads on their feet Mm -hmm. you know um but and i i i I think you see some games moving towards this where race Mm -hmm. i think is getting used a lot less in that yes um and that sort of aspect and whatnot. Uh, but also, you know, like you said earlier, though, I think it's important, though, to keep, like, your cultural and intellectual attributes different than your physical attributes. It's mm-hmm. okay to say someone who is literally half-giant is bigger and stronger than the puny humans, but I don't think it's necessarily fair to then say, like, oh, and also they're they're freaking dumb, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um. Unless yeah. there's there's a really damn good reason for it, and even then, I would really kind of like shy away from writing that in. Yeah, you know? I mean, it, we we see this in other media and framework. Like Star Wars has a ton, or not Star Wars, Star Trek has a ton of bipedal humanoids. Oh yeah, there are tons of different races that have attributes, but their attributes are all over the place. Yeah, it's not their culture. It's yeah. their attributes. Yeah. And within cultures, we see divisions. And that was half of the story, was that there were cultural divisions that were going on in other species. And that you'd step into these situations and go, oh, this cultural divide here we have a view on from our own perspective as humans. Yeah, sure. He, but he, Star Trek's always more or less been that Asmovian sort of storytelling of, like, using 
aliens and robots as analogs to our own mm-hmm. modern problems yep. and examining those problems through the scope, these farcical scopes of, of, of aliens and, 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 uh, uh, and, and androids. And that is where we can learn about role playing. Yeah. In truth, that's, that is what really we need to do with storytelling in that aspect is that we are using storytelling as a device to talk about the things that are uncomfortable in our world, the things that we are fearful of, the things that we are scared to do ourselves, or the things we wish to explore. Yeah. And the only way to handle those types of topics is by giving them an extreme Mm -hmm. and framing it in a black and white way that is comfortable for us to recognize. The difference between following that as a racism in in in-game design is saying that I am setting these rules and not telling you why. Yeah. Shang-Chi does it in bold letters in their book. We are describing and discovering racism for you. Here it is. This is part of the story. Yeah. Yeah, you are playing Chinese immigrants in the 1920s. That is not negotiable. That is what this game is about. Yeah, we're going to... And guess, s- guess what was a very real part of, of, you know, being in Chinatown in the 1920s. Right. Like Racism. Yeah. It is an aspect of the game. Here's yeah. how to do it tastefully. Here's the cultural influences that led to those things, and here's the the, the way that the Chinese, uh, you know, people uh, reacted to it in various ways. Mm-hmm. Please learn from this. Please experience it, and please, you know, do it tastefully at your table, but do it. Yeah, and that's the difference is, is that we don't see that in these games that create these definitions. Mm-hmm. It is ambiguous because someone on the other side of the table isn't the, – the person who's doing that writing has a vision in their mind of what this thing is and why this thing is this thing, but it is never described. It is just the fantasy that is presented to us, and we are to extrapolate. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's where the discomfort comes in. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think another big thing is is humanization mm-hmm. of, uh, you know, kind of like you were saying, like, stop running the all X are evil sort of things. It, in, it, really what this comes down to, I mean, for me, I mean, yeah, look, look. We've talked about how stereotypes are lazy storytelling yes. and, and, and whatnot, but like, man, evil is rarely that simple. Yeah. Evil is rarely that simple. You never, even in its most blatant examples in humanity, you rarely ever see the mustache twirling villain who just wants to destroy everything because... You know, just because, just screw, mm-hmm. screw everything. That's I, I hate everything. That's I want to destroy it. You know, mm-hmm. you don't run into that. You really don't. Um, like I, I've, 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 you know, I've heard a handful of people like you know looking for storytelling advice and whatnot, and they're like, okay, so I've got my setting, and you're like, okay, cool. They're like, and I've got my big bad evil guy, and he just wants to destroy the kingdom, and we're like, cool. Why? What do you mean why? Oh, I, I haven't really thought about that yet. Mm-hmm then you don't then you don't have a story like you haven't thought about the obvious step too because like people don't just decide to destroy stuff right you know that sort of evil doesn't exist and so you've got motivations villains who are the heroes of their own story they think they're doing the right thing at least by some group of people mm-hmm. or they're acting out of pain and out of spite, but at least they've got a motivation. There's something that's driven them to the extreme or whatnot, you know? Um, and I'm not saying, you know, I, I mean, I, look, every story needs a villain. Mm-hmm. Oh, every story needs a villain. Every story doesn't need a villain. We, we, that, already, that, we, we had what, a whole episode on that. But but <laughs> what, what I'm saying is, is like... <sighs> Don't bake okay, it into drama your... Drama is born from conflict is where yes. I want to go with this. Drama yes. is born from conflict, and an easy source of those conflicts is to have some sort of an evil antagonist, a villain, if you will, or a group of people that is acting countercurrent to the interests of lots of people involved. And the countercurrent of heroism is villainy. Is villainy, exactly. And it's very easy just to be like, these dudes are evil for the sake of being evil. But, like, I implore you, humanize your villains. 
That is not to them... say don't make them sociopaths. Oh yeah, yeah, no, 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 do no, that. no, no, absolutely. <laughs> and and I I would say you know it's okay to make them unambiguously evil. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying you have to make every villain sympathetic. Right. And I'm not and I'm not even saying sympathize with villains no. because. A lot of times what makes you a villain is that you are irredeemable. Uh, you you have crossed a line, you know, and you are doing something horrible. Like, I'm not here sitting here going like, hey, guys, humanize Hitler. Like, that's not where I'm going with this. No. At no. all. What I'm saying is take a moment to get inside the heads of your villains. Because if you're evil is all orcs are evil mm-hmm. and that's the end of the discussion – You've got some questions to answer. You've got some questions to ask about your setting and why orcs are evil and stuff like that. What are you trying to say with that? But on the other hand, if you've got a driving force that is pushing them in that direction, Mm -hmm. if it's less evil and more they are provoked, if they are set in that direction out of survival or desperation or fear or something like Again, it doesn't make them good guys, mm-hmm. but it does at least give them a reason why they're doing the thing other than they're just that way. Yeah, I, I, I rem- this struck a chord in my mind of a previous discussion that was on Reddit about a guy who said what I, I presented was presenting the story to my players. And I stated that uh, a whole race had been um, uh, had been enslaved and were being used by the previous king over a hundred years ago, mm-hmm. and uh, that race disappeared. But very few people know that they were enslaved. Mm-hmm. Uh, like the stories today say that they were an evil, you know, a evil lording group, and he, you know, uh, he shackled them and sent them beyond. When in truth, he he conquered them, enslaved them, and sent them to a work camp, and basically let them die off. Mm-hmm. And one of the players were going to be was going to be a, a secretive member of that you know surviving race, and the person said, "I don't like that concept. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I understand you're probably doing something very serious with the story, but the idea that like I, I don't a know how to play someone whose you know family before them was a slave, but I like the idea of the revenge. Is there something we could do about it?" And in a discussion with that player, the player moved the whole thing around. Mm-hmm. To be basically a like railway workers who were never paid and worked in horrible conditions with this dream that they would be able to survive. So the the storyteller rewrote the whole backstory of the race, hmm. but didn't lose any of the feeling by basically saying like he, they were they were brought from another nation that was impoverished after many wars with hopes that they would have a future, and they were never paid. Okay. They okay, were basically okay, okay. used as labor and then left to just their own devices. Yeah, sure, sure. You sure. know, once the work was done. And, like, no towns were made for them and things like that, so they're they're very angry at the crown. There's not much they can do because they're not powerful by any means. Yeah. And their people have been torn up. But, like, it gave the person was like, I could get behind that. Okay, that's something I could easily understand. And the writer was, the, the storyteller was like, I would never thought about doing a flip like that but Mm -hmm. it it doesn't change the story of revenge from this person's perspective yeah their their people were wronged by the crown in a significant way that damaged their culture yeah done yeah and it was it was that shift that this isn't the same crown which is the whole point yeah yeah and there's no place to put that rage Mm -hmm. and that anger and that's that character's whole story is how where do i do with this yeah now, there were still people involved with the previous administration who were around, and there were still edifications of that that existed that they wanted to tear down. So that was part of that story. And I thought that that was a really clever way of incorporating that into the overall arc without, like that. It, without it being an unknown mm-hmm. racism. Yeah. You know, this they he, he worked directly with the player. Or they worked, I don't know if it was he, worked directly with the player to reframp that. And I think that, that recognition... That what you're doing for a reason to make villainy. Yeah, yeah. And understand villainy. But at the same time, in this case, it was a hero needing villainy. And they were like, well, this isn't the same administration. Well, how do we how do we change that? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, let's let's figure that out together. And that makes the story cooperative. Yeah, and I think that actually dovetails nicely into my last point here. And that is um, the self-awareness mm, yeah. of like understanding where you're mirroring reality. 
Like, mm-hmm. understand when you are doing something, um, especially with some sort of a, a racial uh, implication, like slavery. Mm-hmm. Slavery is a thing that really happened mm-hmm. in the United Several States, <laughs> you know, especially here in the United States, mm-hmm. um, up to the point of, like, 1865, you know? Yeah. Um, and, I mean, ultimately, that's not that long ago. No. In the grand scheme of things. Um. And so, it, it, like, we're not saying, you know, don't have slavery in your games, but first off, vibe check your, your, your table. Yes. Always vibe check your table, because it is a very sensitive subject with a lot of real world implications. Like, it's one thing when you've got fantasy violence of like, oh, an evil wizard is summoning a vortex of pain. Cool, that doesn't really have a real world implication, as horrible as it sounds. Right. Vortex of pain doesn't sound like anything I want to touch. But like, uh, you know, the torment nexus. Um, but like, there's nobody at the table who's going to be like, "Oh, my father was killed by a torment nexus." You know. Yeah. Whereas if you're running Shadowrun, and a dwarf can't get in the club because he's a dwarf, and we don't like you metahumans. That's racism. That's direct, and your players might be like. Okay, that was a bit much. Yeah, your your players your, your players may have been or may know someone who has been directly denied entrance to a club because they are not the right type of person. Yeah. And that's horrible. And that can be very very directly triggering to people, you yeah. know. Um, yeah. And it's not great. So again, not saying don't do it. Not at all. But vibe check your players. Vibe check your table. Mm-hmm. Make sure when you're incorporating these elements that you're keeping that discussion open. Mm-hmm. You're keeping your X card available. Yes. And you are ready to respond to that X card should it happen. And we've we've talked about that with the pre-framing your shows, your episodes, like yeah. TV shows with uh, may contain violence yeah. and, and offensive material related to race and slavery. In today's and, game, yeah. there will be a fight in which children are involved. I want this openly, and, and, and if anybody wants to X-card it right now, I can edit the combat encounter. Yep. Otherwise, we will continue and we will play it as it drops. Mm-hmm. You know, etc. The other, The other aspect of this, though, is that when you do include elements that do mirror reality mm-hmm. in there... Um, for instance, I am running an Elder Scrolls game. Yes. There is a house of the Dunmer, the Dark Elves, that are slavers, yeah. that are canonically slavers. House Drez, their icon is even a pair of manacles. Mm-hmm. They they do not question. Yeah. Like, they are the slave trade in Morrowind. Mm-hmm. Um, and they enslave Argonians and Khajiit. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of people, including House Telvanni, that keep them as uh, keep them as slaves to work their fields and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not great, Mm-mm. obviously. Um, but I think the other the other trope that I would encourage you to have is that if you are going to include racists, bigots, etc., people who are perp- direct perpetrators of real world racism and stuff like that, your quote unquote villains. Or they your should, villainy. They should always get their comeuppance. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it's very important that we as storytellers are responsible enough never to take someone who trades slaves and go, maybe he's not that bad of a guy. Maybe he's sympathetic. Yeah. No. No, absolutely not. This person deals with people like their property. I don't think there's ever a room in our stories for that person not to be the villain and not to get punched at the end of the day. Yeah. Or and, and or that they have the ability that, that that ability gets removed. That that their redemption makes is still gonna come with a point. Like, I'm sorry, you're literally a mass murderer. At the end of the day your justice comes. It isn't like we're just gonna pat you on the head and said, You learn from your mistakes. Yeah. That's that's not how that works. Yeah. You yeah. know? Like you literally leveled a quarter of the city terrorizing it and at the end you say you're sorry to everybody and they all go aw oh, and you go and, and now no. you and now you're a baker yeah. no that's not happening nope nope sorry so uh yeah in in my story and I've 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 told told a few of you guys this if you ever see anybody with the with the surname Drez it is okay to kill them 
Mm-hmm. Straight up. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's got a little bit of involvement with one of our characters' backstories because they are anti-slavery and got uh, they got up in house dresses crap mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, ended up getting their house essentially expunged from Dunmer society because of it because house dresses is very powerful. But mm-hmm. there's there's an arc there that pits house dresses the bad guys mm-hmm. uh, inequivocally. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, they and they will always beat the bad guys. Yeah, and I'm going to pause just for a second before we get into our questions, Mm -hmm. because I think we have at least three good, really good questions that we didn't quite hit through our stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Again, we're not saying by this that you're doing it wrong. By any means, all we're saying is examine your stories. And think about the motivations behind things. Think about why you wrote certain things the way that you wrote them, and think about what those things say what yeah. message you might be sending and as a player the way you're reacting to something or someone even though it may be written in a book that you hate this type that your your race hates this race and i put those in quotes you know or this is how your person is because it's written in the mechanics that way does not mean that it is that it is the necessarily even though the right thing to do mm-hmm. because it that that could that is written from a perspective yeah so, just examine. Examine what you're doing before it happens. So. All right. So, questions? I, we had a couple questions from Nevin, but two of them I know we did not cover. Um, one is, what is a good or a bad stereotype? And this is not easy. This is, yeah, this is not an easy question to answer because... Um, I'm going to say, stere- like you said earlier, stereotypes are lazy writing. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's okay. Like, straight up, sometimes that's okay. Yep. If you need a lazy story where you're literally the good guys fighting bad guys in a hack and slash, and you're not doing anything else, define it. Understand that it's lazy. Don't don't dig deeper. Because you're not. You're not intending to do that. Because the moment that you do is you're making an us versus them story, and you're making them, you know... Uh, in a way that is easy for your players to recognize. Don't then unintentionally frame that as a particular race, class, or or genotype of people. Mm-hmm. Because the moment you do that is the moment you're 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 doing a racism. Yeah. The yeah. the moment you frame it like, oh, it's well, they're just like these people, and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. These people. Yeah. Calm down with that. You know. Don't don't do that to them. And that's not to say that you can't use a stereotype to describe a certain person um, or a characterization. When yeah. you're describing an NPC, there's nothing wrong with doing that because it helps your players get a framework. I would much rather use an actor or a character in a story or something like that to get the point across. But I'm never going to, you know, I try not to use terms like, well, he's a normal nerd. Like, he's a typical nerd, you know? Like, a yeah, nerd... What's, what's a typical nerd? I know all sorts of nerds, and none of you guys are typical. Right, right. Yeah. And and that's that's the whole point, is that a stereotypical nerd in our framework is a derogatory about a class of, of people. Mm-hmm. And th- you shouldn't be doing that. So, like, I think I think what I'm hearing you talk about actually is less less stereotypes and more tropes. Correct. And that's I think like what is a good stereotype? It's a trope. It's a trope. It's a trope. Essentially. It's not. It's not a stereotype. Um, if it's bad, it's a stereotype. I think if it's good, it's a trope. Yeah. Um, if you're using it in a way to just be like fits these common narrative beats, yes, is one thing. But yeah, if you're if you're categorizing whole groups of people with with you know small short words and language uh it's prob you're probably leaning into a stereotype there yeah so there there there's your point lean to tropes is good stereotypes are bad uh so next question um how do you use stereotypes for a better game i'm gonna let you start oh uh, okay so i i'm generally against this um in, in in the in the general sense, um, I think there's a lot of stories that you can <laughs> that you can get involved in that you can tell without um, leaning into any sort of stereotypes or anything like that. Uh, what I will say though is that 
Um, stories are a great place, as we were kind of talking about earlier, to examine things in our real world. Yes. You know, we mentioned Isaac Asimov, and he was really great at taking a real world um, situation and putting robots in that situation and having the robots talk about, like, isn't this strange? Isn't this absurd? How do we handle it? Why do we view it this way? You know? Mm -hmm. And it was really great for, like, seeing us as humans watching robots react to this situation and go, oh, yeah, that is strange. Why do we why do we react that way? You know? Mm -hmm. And it's an examination of the human condition. And you can do that with your games as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, it comes with the big disclaimer of always vibe check your table before you do this and during doing this and shortly after doing this. Uh, But I think absolutely you can put a stereotype out there for examination as the main theme Mm -hmm. of your game. I I think that's, I mean, to to jump onto that, Yeah, you mentioned mentioned Zhang Shi in uh, Blood in the Banquet Hall earlier. And and that, that is a core theme of the game yeah. is like hey guess what we set this in 1920s chinatown for a reason mm-hmm. because racism is a very real part of this story mm-hmm. and examining how it interacts with you on a day-to-day basis and how you react to it mm-hmm. and etc cetera, etc cetera, uh, you know is the point of part of that game also fighting hopping vampires you know but well but it, and the thing is, is that they be the hopping vampires add to the flavor of what you're doing during your day cycle yeah. because they're there. Yeah, they're, they, you know what's going to happen. Um, but th- and that's the whole point of it is like we 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 examine things like Shadowrun, mm-hmm. which is steeped in classism, racism, bigotry, all kinds of things. Oh yeah, it was a st- it's a cyberpunk dystopia. So you know. Uh, this, it's it's rife for those awful elements to be ingrained in society. But at the same time, it frames the theme to point that out at point-blank range. Yes. People were goblinized recently. Yeah. Society wasn't, like, all happy hunky-dory about humans before that. Now we have people who are orcs and people who are trolls and people who are dwarves who now now we hate even more. Mm-hmm. Right? And these groups have cluttered together in places, but the story is about a team that are all down in some way. They're all they're all struggling for yeah. something. Yeah, and that's that's the beauty of that is that the story embedded within mm-hmm. everything has nothing to do. No, I shouldn't say have nothing to do. Is not bent on the theme. The theme adds the flavor. Behind it. Yeah. It, it is an eclectic group who band together despite what's going on around them to handle the situation. Right. For the betterment of themselves and maybe each other. Yeah, what, did I, what was it I, uh, I said earlier when we were talking about this? It was like uh, ra- racism is a luxury of the uh, of the rich. Exactly. That's, you know, that's it's like l- you're you're a bunch of poor shadow runners living you know in essentially the 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 gutter the, the gutter shadows yeah. of of the renreku arcology like you don't hate the orc who lives next to you you can hear his conversations through your paper thin apartment walls yeah. you know what you hate is renreku arcology all of you hate renreku let's yeah. go yeah <laughs> and but you have to use their crap because it's what's available you don't you don't get paid enough to hate orcs or dwarves or whatever right. like it's just you know, that's, yeah. it's not a luxury you have. But th- that is the theme of the story. Like, and the luxury levels go down from the top all the way to the gangs who have a group of bikes and they own a part of the city. Mm-hmm. They are only a quarter step higher than you, but you hate them for what they're doing to you. Right. You don't hate them because they're an orc gang. You hate right. them because they're bikers and they're assholes. <laughs> right. <laughs> and they, 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 they hold the corner of the, the, you know, the corner of fifth and main where your stuffer shack is. And yeah. You just want a burrito. <laughs> All of that is true. And now they're shooting at you. <laughs> right, because you didn't pay him this week. Or the stuffer shack didn't pay him this week. Right. But that's but all of it is wrapped around that, and that is the beauty of storytelling and development within a world theme that is that where the story isn't about the act of racism. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's that's where stereotypes f- are, are f- the flavor of the day. Yeah. In that sense. Yeah. Like, the the arcology of Renraku is a culture of uh, of of a um 
of a very clean design, right? And it's promoting this egalitarianism of who they are, and they do not accept r- other races and sub races. But that isn't the story. That's that's not I, what it's about. No, I would dare say actually the arcologies are an extension of racism because they are ivory towers that separate the elite from the unwashed masses below. Yes, in a very real and like concrete way (laughs) yeah yeah and stories there's other stories that are seeped with the same level of grayness and darkness that fight that same thing dread judge dread is a whole world that's in the same kind of framework as dystopianism that isn't that many degrees off of our own reality Mm -hmm. it's that mirror that we're presenting yeah and what we're willing to accept but it's it's part of that of where stereotypes handle the theming of the world not the story Mm mm-hmm or, or even the players within it. Yeah. They're aware. And I think that's where it it can make for a better game because you're not making that about the players. You're making it about the world. Yeah. So. And it's known. It's recognized. It is known. And it's obvious. Uh, all right. Uh, so, uh, actually, one of our new listeners, uh, Arcticus. Yes. Welcome, um, welcome, welcome. Arcticus. Thank like you for ask, joining us. Uh, where does character archetype and a stereotype... Uh, Sorry, where does character archetype end and a stereotype begin? So, they don't. Because the moment that you create a... The the stereotype is the cheapening. An archetype is a form. So, I may be a gun bunny, Mm -hmm. where I'm bristling with weapons and and ready at at the ready to look down a sight, but that doesn't make me an orc or an elf or or idiot or smart that makes me a job yeah right yeah and i think archetypes differ from stereotypes because there is no referencing anything else i'm not referenced against anything i am a thing hmm. okay. and I, okay. I think that's where you have to understand that an archetype like a tank or a healer or a thing is is a job it's a position, it is a, a task, if you will, um, which is what, like, City of Mist does a good job of yeah, this, yeah. because you're a fairy or a ghost. It doesn't say how you got there, it doesn't say what you were beforehand, and it doesn't say how you're going to react to other things. Yeah, you're, you're just the living embodiment of a myth. Correct. Yeah. You know, well, that's, yeah. And, and but the whole point of that is you, you are, you are an archetype, you are a, 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 a framed individual of a of a position Mm -hmm. not referenced to something else for me i think the difference between the two um an an archetype is more of a suggestion it's a starting point yes whereas a stereotype is a pigeonhole Mm, that's a good way of putting it it says you are constrained to this this is this is what you are because you have this this particular origin or essence it defines the boundaries between you and the next thing yeah whereas yeah. an archetype gives you the a circle starting from which point the and the first says, stepping stone yep a starting point and says go from there no i like that yep. i think that's a great way the, the the stereotype would be your boundary of how far you may go mm-hmm no, that's a great way of putting it visually, too. So. Uh, all right. So Overwatch asks, uh, Dungeons & Dragons in its current incarnation has greatly reduced the racial stereotypes in recent years. What do you think we have gained from this, and what do you think we've lost? Hmm. Uh, I will be the first to answer this, actually. Um, okay. I don't think we've lost anything. I really don't. I don't think we've lost anything of any value. Um, because first off, I think a great many people out there are already using Dungeons & Dragons um, as a stepping stone to tell their own unique stories. I know you I, you and I both have. Sean has. Um, you know, We've all taken our own look at these worlds and given it our own twist and our interpretation. So I don't think them pulling out any of the outdated stereotypes has hindered anyone in any significant way whatsoever what have we gained freedom a fresh look at an old product a a a current discussion whether that discussion is going well or not whether you know it's we're at least having the discussion Mm -hmm. about it Mm -hmm. i think we have everything to gain nothing to lose frankly um i don't think i don't think them cutting out parts of things saying that all all drow are irredeemably evil 
hurts anybody in any significant way whatsoever. I agree. Um, I think we've gained insight by the discussion. Mm-hmm. Um, we've, we've cracked the case. We've started looking at what the innards really look like and uh, of a certain aspect of the game. And in that, you know, we're never going to be able to redesign it because the design is fundamentally flawed in a, in a leaned direction. Yeah. At, at, at its core, it is, it is designed a certain way and it will take geniuses and years to reframe it in the right direction to get where it, where it would need to go to have a lasting impact. I think our losses only come if we don't understand why we're making the changes. Yeah, I agree. I think if I if changes are made and then a new edition comes out and a new race gets added and somewhere in its description it says, and it hates X, mm-hmm. why did that get put in? Yeah. Why, why are we back to this? Yeah. You know, wh- why why is this there? And un- just that simple understanding of what the growth step was and why is the key to breaking this down. Agreed. Agreed 100%. And, like, just <laughs> evolving role play in the United States mm-hmm. is going to take time. Sure. Role playing worldly takes time as well. But there are, but the the fundamental understanding of what we have here in the United States feels still light years behind where it needs to be for as long as we've been gaming and telling stories. It still feels like we're children stumbling through the dark, not understanding that what we're trying to what, what we're really trying to do with our make believe in discovering stories and growth, because we're not discussing why we're making the changes as a as a group. We're, yeah, not ex- okay. we're not explaining to the to the people at the bottom level, the newest gamers, mm-hmm. hey, this is why we do what we do and why these things are the way they are. Yeah. Well, why why you don't poke at somebody and say, why is that person different, mommy? To to a, you know? to, a, to a lot of people though it's not that deep, you know. And that's and, and that's the problem is I think a lot you. of people don't think that there are any implications to what you do. Oh we're, oh, we're just rolling dice. Oh, we're just having fun. Oh, we're just, you know, killing orcs or whatever. Like, it's not that deep. Like, you know, when we're killing orcs, we're not thinking about black people. Like, right, but maybe it's okay that you look at it and you go, oh, holy, like, holy crap, I see a lot of analogs between the two now, you know, and... Yeah. Are you playing a board game or are you role-playing? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I will... I will stand on that hill and have a very long discussion. Oh, he will. About that. Oh, he will. Like, it's, it's, I'm not saying you're playing games wrong. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying don't use the word role play. Yeah. And storytelling if that's not what you're doing. Right, right. Acknowledge what you're doing. That's the, I think that's the first step. Yep. Don't, don't, don't say you're street racing when you and your friend are literally sitting at a light just revving your engines at each other and then take off, but don't actually take off. You're not street racing. That's yeah. not what you're doing. Stop it. Also, slow down. You're going to get to the red light just as soon as I am. <sighs> it's hilarious every time. Yeah. All right. Uh, we good? Yeah, I think, I think we are. I think we're good. I think we're good. Do you think uh, we're good? I, just, I think we nailed it. <laughs> Tell us in the comments. <laughs> I think we, we, we nailed it as good as two white people can. Yeah, yeah. Two white, decently, <clears throat> well, uh, survivors of, of Rel- Relatively affluent suburbanites. Yes. Um, so next week's topic uh, is going to be about D&D as a lifestyle brand. Yeah, we have Apple, Adidas, Land Rover. <laughs> like, these are these are brands that we recognize on people. On on their life. And uh, has D&D kind of become a lifestyle brand? Um, uh, well, you'll find out all of our opinions next week. Uh, so, anywho, you can find us on Twitter at ST underscore Conclave. On Instagram at ST underscore Conclave. Listen to us live every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Time on MixLR.com slash Storyteller dash Conclave. And uh, join us up on our Discord. We'd love to have you uh, shoot us some uh, some questions. We're getting towards the end of the year. We need show topics, guys. Oh, God, uh, please If you've help got us. suggestions for things you want to hear us pontificate about for a little over an hour, <laughs> uh, go ahead and shoot us to us. And you can find the link to our Discord on our Twitter as well as StoryTellerConclave.com. 
We'd like to thank our Patreon members, especially our name members who help us out every month. Knox in the Box, Subjet, Sam, The Arcane Asylum, Sparkle Motion, Vedran, Hulavu, and Sean. We really do appreciate all your support. Our pre-show music is by Arcane Anthems. You can find that at patreon.com slash arcane anthems. And by the way, he is doing some amazing stuff on Instagram. Everyone should check that shit out. Yeah, right on. Um, Our intro music is Beyond the Warrior by Geefrog. You can find that at geefrog.bandcamp.com or on Google Music. And our outro music, which you're hearing right now, is Only Our Footprints in the Sand by Midair Machine. You can find that at freemusicarchive.org. And big shout out, as always, to our families, Vicky and Sean. Thank you so much for loving and supporting us. All of our friends have sat at the side of tables to give these great stories to share with you. And you, every single one of our listeners, we love you guys so much. Love you. Have a good Thanksgiving. Good night. Good night.